the thing is, I don't think that the college environment has the demands on a head coach that are analogous enough, similar enough to the NFL demands that I as an owner could look at a college coach's success and say, here's why he was successful and here's how it'll map to the NFL. I just think it's too far of a bridge to cross. So if I'm if I'm an NFL owner and I'm trying to figure out how do I take this large field of candidates, all these incredible coaches in the world, and winnow it down to the guys I want to interview and really commit to, I'm not stepping into college. I just don't think that they, they map onto each other enough that I can decipher what would make a really good NFL coach out of some of the college applicants? All right. There are, there are definitely differences. I will not deny that. A, a coach who has spent his life in college and then has to coach in the NFL, there's going to be a, an adjustment period. There are going to be things he needs to learn. However, the NFL has like created this myth that like they've identified the 30 best, 32 best football coaches in the world. And it's not even close to the case. I mean, there's so much at play here. Politics, race, relationships, you name it. I mean, you look at the assistant coaches, like these are not the best assistant coaches, the best position coaches in the world. There are great coaches at the college level. There are great coaches at the high school level. It is about finding someone who has great leadership skills, uh, who can connect with players, believes in relationships, who can assemble a good staff. Like those things easily could theoretically come from a college coach as much as an NFL coach. I mean, I could go and name uh, Nathaniel Hackett. Wow, NFL over a decade. The guy is a complete disaster. Joe Judge, Matt Patricia. I mean, we can name a bunch of bad coaches. The reason Pete Carroll- Two of those three guys are Belichick assistants, by the way, which you say in your article not to hire. Well, the, yeah, some yeah, bad faith they, arguments over here. No, you're saying that you're, I, I'm arguing against your thing. Like higher, they, they were in the NFL. I mean, they were NFL people. Right. And College they is one of the guardrails. So, so yeah, no you Belichick shouldn't hire assistance is another guardrail. I'm not advocating hiring Belichick assistants. But there are like bad coaches can come from anywhere. Good coaches can come from anywhere. Like that sample is, I mean, that's 11 coaches over a span of 22 years. It's too small of a sample to draw any conclusions. And we can say like, all right, Jim Harbaugh, like Cliff Kingsbury played in the NFL for what? He spent four or five years. He wasn't, you know, starting games, but he was in the culture, whatever that means, in the environment, knew how the NFL operates, knows how a game plan is put together. Cliff Kingsbury wasn't a bad coach because he came from college. He was a bad college coach. Coach. They put it, the Cardinals put on their press release. This guy was friends with Sean McVay. I mean, that was a bad process from the beginning. To me, that didn't have anything to do with, you know, him being in college. If anything, I mean, his relationships other than Kyler with players seems to be like, like fine. That, that, that's not why uh, he failed. So coaches fail for any number of different reasons. But coaches who coached in the NFL all the time fail. Coaches who coached in college all the time fail. Uh, a, a, a listener or a reader, Trey Counter responded uh, about just that, the, the the numbers between college and the NFL and pointed out that since 2010, uh, college coaches have a 468 winning percentage in the NFL, first time uh, coaches, and coaches from the NFL have a 473 winning percentage. Like it's almost exactly the same. So I, I would not right. put uh, that bucket that I'm not going to look there. Like there could be, I mean, come on, if Nick Saban came into the NFL right now and you found him a quarterback, you're telling me he would not succeed in the NFL? Nick Saban is a, it didn't work out in Miami. They didn't find the quarterback. He goes back to college. But, you know, if you're a great coach uh, and you can adjust and you understand, I agree with you, you need to understand that it's different. Um, Urban Meyer was going to be a disaster regardless. We all saw that. Mm -hmm. Anybody who approaches the job that way and puts such little effort into doing anything right is going to be a disaster. But to me, I think you're painting with, uh, what was this, a too broad too a brush? brush? Is that to say? Okay, well, okay, yeah. If Nick Saban came to the NFL, I think he'd figure it out. Yeah. But also that's pie in the sky. Like, yeah. Also, if Albert Einstein became an NFL head coach, I think eventually he'd figure it out. But we can't hire Nick Saban. We can't hire Albert Einstein. When you're getting a college coach, you are inherently getting a tier two to tier three college coach. You're not getting a tier one college coach. He's not leaving. Right. So so you're running into that issue. I don't this know is, if I this agree is, with that. I mean, Jim Harbaugh is like about Jim Harbaugh is dying to leave. I mean, that's evident. Yeah, Jim Harbaugh's getting hit with NCAA sanctions. Well, no, I, I, I mean, he even last year it it sounded pretty obvious that he wanted to come back to the NFL. I, I think they're absolutely. That's because Jim Harbaugh's an NFLer. It's because he's not a college guy. <laughs> the the thing is, I don't think only hiring from NFL circles prevents you from making a bad hire. I just think when you look at the history of good hires over the last 10 years, you don't find guys who are college dudes. You find guys who are NFLers. There's 10,000 ways to get it wrong. 
but I don't look at the college field and see this this influx of like evolution and disruption and, and innovation that you're talking about. You said like, you know, the, the NFL's created this like hard outer shell. They've created this insular group, this boys club where the, all the good coaches come from the NFL. Why can't they reach out to college? That's what Cliff was supposed to be. Cliff was supposed to be an uh, innovator. Bring the air raid. Never got close. Never but he didn't do that in it. college. He, he couldn't do that with Patrick Mahomes in college. I mean, that was a flaw. And, and you're like, you're moving the goalposts on what counts as a college coach and what counts as an NFL coach. Like Pete Carroll became a great coach at USC and is now a Hall of Fame NFL coach. He's taking his team to the playoffs, what, 10 of 13 years. So like, what counts more? I mean, he runs. I bet if you talk to players who played for the Seahawks, they would be like, yeah, this sort of feels like a, a more college program. Like he has approaches to his job that that are really more college. You talk your favorite team, the Eagles. You know, you know, you you pointed out a million times on Philly Special. They're running a college offense all season long, and it's a top five offense. So I, I just think there's more. You know, it depends right. on your personnel. It depends all these things, your program. Uh, but uh, I would not rule out those possibilities. The, is all the trickle saying. up of college scheme influence is a whole separate thing. That to me is a completely different conversation. Because when you bring up Pete, like Pete's the perfect example, where this is not about scheme. This is about culture this is about like the business aspect this is about how you treat the men this is about how you handle the locker room this is about the way you talk to guys right like it's just i i don't see college coaches guys who really cut their teeth spent all of their time learning how college programs working worked getting up to the nfl level and being able to extrapolate i like i just think i like it goes back to my overall point i think that you think that college and nfl are more connected than they are i don't think they're that connected they're connected because NFL players come from college players, but I think like, in terms of how the programs are run, in terms of the day to day, the nine to five, how you spend your hours, what you spend them on, and how you behave when you do it, it's different. I think it's worlds different. And Pete can do it, and Harbaugh can do it because they lived in it. Like you said, oh, Cliff was there for five years. Cliff was there for three years, and then he spent the next three years with the Calgary Bombers and the Winnipeg Jets. He's been going to the season, the same amount of time in the CFL. He was always a college guy. That's where he was successful. That's where he 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 learned how to make it work. So to me, it, it's a it's a culture thing. It's a business thing. It's a community thing. It's a relationships thing where you either speak NFL or you don't, and that's annoying. That's bad because it enforces the you know the hard shell. It enforces the boys club. But I, if I'm an owner, to me, it's reality. I need a guy who's going to step in and immediately understand how to run an NFL locker room and treat NFL players. I don't want to mess around with anybody else. I agree with that, but there are NFL coaches who don't know how to do that. Matt Patricia's yeah, players a- were literally drinking mimosas on the last meeting of the year because they didn't have to see his face again until the summer. And that's not good. So you can be a college. Don't tell me no college coach knows how to build relationships with players. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yes, there are power hungry, ridiculous, my way or the highway college coaches. There are those coaches in the NFL too. They're like, like Pete Carroll knew how to do that at USC. Pete Carroll then knew how to do that in the NFL. And so uh, I just think it's a case by case thing. I hate the, we know how the, how the NFL speaks. There's nothing that grinds my gears more than that. The, oh, we, we know how the NFL speaks. So, like you didn't make it. Listen, Mr. NFL coach, GM, scout, whatever. You didn't make it there because you're the best and the brightest. Like you, I, we both had, I had conversations with NFL coaches and GMs and more often than not, I'm thinking, how did that guy get there? Not, oh my gosh, that guy's so brilliant. He just worked his way up and they found this amazing difference maker. So that is my point. All right, this is good. This we is, disagree. I, you, 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 are, you are very niftily positing me as a defender of Matt Patricia, which I would like to make a very clear <laughs> I am not. Every single counter argument starts with, well, Matt Patricia did this and George did that. Though I would not hire those guys either on the premise that they're knuckleheads and I don't want them exactly. in the building. Exactly. Don't hire knuckleheads. That's our role. All right. All right.